Egypt and some other friends of Nigeria will all will surely come out as a nation because we are fighting a just cause. Even a little child on the street will tell you this. We shall never go back to Nigeria again. God's grace will surely emerge as a nation. And so as far as this war continues, we'll fight to the last man. The leader of the Biafran people is His Excellency Lieutenant Colonel Jukwameka Ojukwu. In those hot days, the Quakers and they, the only thing we could do was to found a place where our fleeing compatriots could at least find an end to their flight. This is what Biafra is, the end of the journey for a persecuted, massacred, pursued people. We have made all attempts at a democratic resolution of this crisis. I have offered open elections, plebiscite. I have offered just an open carte blanche suggestion anybody who can find a democratic way of finding out the wishes of the people, let him suggest it and we will go for it. Uh, my name is before the war, Gaia Kobu was a lawyer, a refugee from Port Harcourt. He talks about his brothers. As an ordinary Biafran, I have been uh, affected by this war, just the same way as uh, millions of others. This is one of the main uh, squares in uh, the town of Umwa here. It's right opposite uh, the market. Now, mo mo most, most of the stores are open, not, not because they do a lot of business, but because they just have to keep open to make believe as if life is still normal, as if they're still carrying on their normal day-to-day uh, -day business. They don't sell much, and even at the prices which they sell, the ordinary man in the street can't afford uh, to pay for these products, but still they have to keep open. That is those who are not employed in essential services. When people go to the market and they find that prices are so high, really there ain't much they can do about it because they know it's not the fault of the traders, but the people are really not bothered. It does not affect their morale. In fact, one thing which has helped uh, Biafrans to bear and to sustain themselves is the extended family system. Every Biafran considers any other Biafran as his own brother or sister. And if he finds anyone hungry, he takes the person in and gives him some food. You see, we are interdependent and we treat ourselves as uh, brothers as one because we're all undergoing the same suffering and the same hardship. Can't find any Biafran begging. Uh, people are really ashamed to go begging either for food or for money. They prefer to do an honest day's work for their uh, daily bread because we understand what we're fighting, uh, what we're fighting for and we prefer to make any sacrifice whatever, no matter how long it lasts, so as to get our fundamental rights. That is the right to exist as a people, the right to protect ourselves, the right to our home, to practice our religion, to live as we would like to live. The head of the Biafran judiciary is their chief justice, Sir Louis Mbenefo. Uh, as a judge, naturally, I believe in the rule of law, and the government of Biafra believes in that. Right from the start of the crisis, uh, we have maintained law and order in Biafra. The courts have been functioning subject to the exigencies of the war. In fact, if you look outside here, you'll see four courts in this area, all performing their duty. Uh, I think that is uh, very good evidence of stability. But uh, we who are in the leadership have learned one lesson. And when a people are determined, you cannot crush them by force of arms. And if this war has done one thing, it's made Biafra into a nation. Every child, every woman, every man feels it in his blood. It's a thing you cannot conquer. You only have to walk out in the street and it stares you in the face. You go through Biafra in all facets of life. We have all that makes a nation.
the Igbo people have been fighting against an attempt at the systematic annihilation of their entire population. They are isolated from the outside world and outnumbered in the field, but the Biafran determination intensifies. <laughs> I have a large army on the field now fighting. The government and the people, or rather the government of Biafra has never paid that army. Everything that army uses still today is by voluntary contribution. The army of Biafra is fed by the locals in whatever area they're operating in. Talk of our troops. To really understand them, to understand us, one has always to bear in mind that we are fighting most reluctantly. We are not fighting as a concerted policy to do something or to seize something. It's a reflex action. We have to do it because something is happening to yes. us. And that affects the whole attitude of the military, um, all of them would sooner see an end to all this. <laughs> I am Major General Philip Prefiong, the Chief of General Staff of the Biafran Armed Forces. When this war started, we had um, 128 rifles. We did not have a single mortar, certainly not a single mortar shell. And we just had no answer to these things. The Nigerian uh, propaganda is quite effective because they give the impression that we are finished here. Of course we are far from finished and uh, we do know that we can go on fighting them. We are always in readiness and that we are quite prepared to carry on this struggle for as long as the Nigerians like. Nigerians are concerned. It has been total, it has been all out. But the truth is this, that we are fighting for our survival. I mean, I don't know how, 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 how we can best convince the world, but this is really so. Since they don't um, want to see their way to talking peace, we are quite ready that um, they will not talk peace, then we will not surrender. That is one thing we will not do, they can be sure of that. If the world wants the whole of Biafrans to be murdered in cold water or killed off, maybe they will do that. They will have their own Nigeria, but there will be nobody in it. <laughs>